and they are bound from 0 to 1. So I can leave this integral as pi from 0 to 1 of x minus x to the fourth. And again, that's pretty simple. So we're not going to spend the class's time to actually calculate it. But this illustrates the washer method of the large one minus the small one. OK, so I'm going to leave you with the washer method question to try. Um, there's no setup here, so there's no graphs. This question is, manufacturer has a, uh, a metal sphere, and you drill a hole through the sphere. Okay. So when we drill that hole through, what is the volume of the resulting ring? You basically end up with a bead, right? If you take that sphere and you drill a hole through it, you end up with kind of something that would look like a bead for like a bracelet or a necklace. So see if you can picture the way this is going to work. Um, one thing that's going to help you out here, the equation for this uh, sphere if you put it onto two dimensions, a circle, this is the top half of that circle. Uh, it would look like this roughly to get you started. That's the equation I just gave you. Um, it used to be a part of our Math 12 course, so we didn't normally have to give you the equation, but nonetheless, there you go. You can have the equation to get started. You have to really think now, you're working with spheres and drills, which are three dimensions. You have to picture and model this in two. The way you get back into three dimensions is after you rotate it. So the first question you have to ask yourself is, can I model this in two dimensions? If you can model it in two dimensions, rotation brings it back to three. Okay, so give it a start, and we'll see where, you, uh, where you're at in a couple minutes. Okay, so um, we got to go to two dimensions to, to put it on our page. Right? We're starting in three dimensions with the problem, but unfortunately, we don't have a three-dimensional piece of paper. So let's think about it for a second. You take a sphere, you squash it into two dimensions. What does it become? A circle. So that's one thing we we'll probably want to have somewhere on our sheet just to help us think about this problem. Okay, so there's my sphere. If I've crushed it into two dimensions or I'm looking at it you know, straight on as, as a flat object. Now, what happens to a drill when you go from three dimensions to two dimensions? Yeah, it's hard to see, but it is a rectangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of paper and I'm going to roll it into my, my best drill. Um, couldn't use steel because <coughs> then it wouldn't work. Um, so I know a drill is normally steel, but the reason I've got this rolled piece of paper is then I can show you what happens to it if I squash it. So if I put it on the table here and I give it a good squish, that's what you get. Right? So it may not be super obvious to you that it's going to become a rectangle, but that's what happens. So when I, when I think about the two-dimensional picture, this is my drill two dimensions onto the circle. So here's what it would look like as it goes through that circle. This rectangle represents the drill as it goes through. And it doesn't matter how long the drill is, as long as it goes all the way through. Because you know, even if it's way off the ends, it's, it's still going to show me the same piece getting taken out. So if this was my model, how do I get? Um, Let's just see here. I mean, I guess it looks a little bit like a hamburger right now. So if this was a hamburger, <laughs> what, uh, what would be the pieces that are going to make up my volume? Like, is it the lettuce, pickles, onions, cheese? What is it that makes up the, uh, the volume? The buns, right? So this here, you getting hungry? This is, uh, this is the volume. So how is that going to go into three dimensions? Can you picture it? What's going to, how am I going to get this two-dimensional picture back to where I started? Yeah, rotate it. So again, visualization is super important, but you've got to trust me here because I can't draw this, and I couldn't do that animation. Yeah, I have a hard enough time drawing circles. But if I was to rotate this piece, um, it would then become, so let's just say we put a, we put a line through here like this. If I rotate it around there, then I'm going to end up with a sphere with a hole drilled through it. Drilled through it. <laughs> okay, so um, let's put some more uh, images on here, okay? So it tells me the radius is 3. So I know that the height up to here, this is 3 right there. Not the entire thing, right? Because that would be the diameter. But just this one little piece is 3 units tall. And I know that the circle 
has a radius of 5. Okay? So now I'm going to put it back onto a graph so that I can talk about some math for it. So here's my, maybe I'll straighten those out. <laughs> so here's my axes. And I'm going to put a circle of radius 5 on there. So, kind of. <laughs> uh, there's my circle. And if I want to rotate this thing, uh, we said it had to happen, there's got to be three units up here. So roughly like this. And when I do this rotation, I actually don't need the bottom of the, of the circle. Because when I do that rotation, that's going to come underneath the axes. The whole thing is going to end up there anyways. So this is the piece here, now that I'm actually thinking of. And I have some equations to work with. Okay, so I'll take the easy one here. That's what it is when you're a straight line at height 3, right? Cuts through, gives me a radius 3. The other equation I've given you is that y equals uh, 25 minus x squared will give me the equation of the circle. So what we need to calculate now is where do we do the integration? Okay, what are those points where they meet up? So what do you think? You might be able to see it better on your calculator. You could also use your calculator's intersect method. Um, or you could also do this, which is not as bad as it seems. Um, if you square both sides, you end up with uh, uh oh technical glitch. OK, so we're back with batteries now, so we can continue this off. If you were to do this one quickly without, uh, we get uh, x squared is 16. So you get plus or minus 4. And that is, in fact, the dots here. This happens at 4. This happens at negative 4. And uh, you can use the graphing calculator if it was available to you. Uh, remember, that would be questions 1 to 3. You'd be able to do uh, the intersection method. So we end up with plus or minus 4. That means I can come up with an integral to start with. It's going to be from negative 4 to 4. When I rotate this, this is the way I'm going to have to rotate it in order to get that hole of radius 3 and the sphere of radius 5. So I need to come up with, is this going to be a disk or washer method question? Sorry? It's going to be washer because there's a hole through it, right? The question already implies that there's a hole missing. So it's going to be the large radius, which is this. This is my capital R, the big one, and the small radius, which is 3. So if you were to draw a piece on here, you'd see that that's what we're doing, is we're taking all the height up to here, and I'm subtracting 3 of it away. So to write the integral, it's going to be root... 25 minus x squared uh, squared minus 3 squared and we're going with respect to x. Okay, so this will be pi from negative 4 to 4 of 25 minus x squared minus 9. So I could leave my integral like this. It would be ready to go in the calculator here. And again, it's a pretty simple integral once you've got the picture down properly. 